Hello everyone welcome today's top 5 news highlights from American Life 365 August 2, 2024. Trump proposes end to taxes on Social Security benefits. U.S. says Maduro's opponent won presidential election. France investigates threats against Olympics opening ceremony director. Africa's cost of living protests reach Nigeria. Trump endorsement saves lawmaker freshman representative Andy Ogles, Bar, Tennessee, won a tough primary. Seniors should not pay tax on Social Security, the Republican presidential nominee posted in all caps on his Truth Social Network on Wednesday before repeating the idea at a Pennsylvania rally that night. Teaming it with another floated idea, he followed up Thursday, no tax on Social Security for seniors, no tax on tips. Trump is promising to protect Social Security and Medicare benefits. President Donald Trump's proposal to eliminate taxes on Social Security benefits aims to provide targeted tax relief for seniors. This proposal would benefit many older Americans by allowing them to keep more of their Social Security benefits. Seniors would be able to keep more of their income, which can help with daily expenses and improve their quality of life. Many seniors feel that they have already paid taxes on their earnings throughout their working lives, and taxing Social Security benefits can seem like double taxation. By eliminating these taxes, the proposal aims to provide financial relief to seniors who rely on Social Security as a significant part of their income. However, there are concerns about the fiscal impact of this proposal. It could reduce federal revenue by $1.6 to $1.8 trillion over the next decade. This proposal could hasten the depletion of the Social Security Trust Fund to 2032 from 2033 and increase automatic benefit cuts, social welfare reform and reduce welfare abuse. Welfare abuse and fraud are indeed significant concerns. According to recent estimates, improper welfare payments, including fraud and abuse, account for about 9.2% of all federal welfare payments, totaling approximately $101 billion in fiscal year 2023. This includes both intentional fraud and unintentional errors. It's important to address these issues to ensure that welfare programs effectively support those in genuine need while minimizing misuse. Efforts to reduce welfare abuse often involve improving verification processes, increasing oversight, and implementing stricter penalties for fraud. Washington, the U.S. recognized the opponent to Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro as the winner of that country's disputed presidential election, increasing the pressure on the Venezuelan strongman to step down despite his claim of victory. The announcement on Thursday by Secretary of State Antony Blinken is the latest escalation of rhetoric from Washington urging Maduro to step aside since last weekend, when polling data indicated he was trounced by his challenger, retired diplomat Edmundo Gonzalez. Gonzalez received 7.1 million votes compared to Maduro's 3.2 million, according to opposition data. Secretary of State Antony Blinken called for a peaceful transition in accordance with Venezuelan electoral law. This is not the first time the U.S. has tried to move Maduro out of power. In 2019 then-President Donald Trump announced that he was recognizing Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido as the legitimate president of Venezuela. But Maduro hung on, using the army and police to hound his political opponents into submission and exile. Paris, French prosecutors are investigating cyberbullying against Thomas Jolly the artistic director of the Paris Olympics opening ceremony the criticism stems from a scene in the ceremony involving dancers and drag queens, which some conservatives and Christians saw as mocking, the Last Supper. Jolly has received death threats and anti-Semitic messages on social media. Thomas Jolly filed a complaint with French officials on Tuesday. He said he has been the target of hateful and threatening messages, including death threats on social media many of them regarding his sexual orientation and national origins. A spokeswoman for the Paris prosecutor's office said the investigation has been passed to a specialized unit that investigates hate crimes. Washington, the Senate failed to advance a bipartisan tax bill that had previously passed the House. The bill fell short of the 60 votes needed, with 48 senators voting to advance it and 44 voting no. The bill aimed to revive expired tax provisions for businesses, 
expand the low-income housing tax credit and the child tax credit for low-income families too. It also proposed cutting off the employer attention tax credit. The nearly $80 billion tax bill had been on life support for months as lawmakers blew past self-imposed deadlines. The bill, which passed the House 357 to 70 and is backed by President Biden, the bill had support from progressive anti-poverty groups and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. However, most Senate Republicans opposed it, citing it favored Democratic priorities. Some progressives also saw it as too business-friendly. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer voted no to retain the option to call another vote in the future. With the Senate on the eve of its summer recess, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, D, New York, scheduled a procedural vote to put lawmakers on the record. Young Africans are protesting against rising costs of living and poor governance in Nigeria, Kenya, and Uganda. Young Africans, pummeled by the rising cost of living and dissatisfied with bad governance and a dire lack of opportunities, are driving a wave of protests that has now swept through at least three countries across the continent. On Thursday, thousands of mostly young Nigerians took to the streets in the capital Abuja, in the economic hub of Lagos and in other cities across Africa's most populous nation, despite warnings of a crackdown from the country's authorities. Protesters in the West African country said they were inspired by weeks-long demonstrations in Kenya, thousands of miles away in East Africa, which succeeded in stopping a raft of unpopular tax increases. Last week, crowds of young Ugandans also marched through that country's capital, Kampala, to denounce alleged government corruption, and earlier this week a court in the West African country of Ghana blocked a youth-led protest there. Inspiration from Kenya Nigerian protesters were inspired by successful demonstrations in Kenya that halted tax increases. Many African countries face high public debt, inflation, and currency devaluation, leading to economic stagnation and public discontent. Several other countries are experiencing protests similar to those in Nigeria, Kenya, and Uganda. France, the Yellow Vest movement, which began in late 2018, continues to protest against fuel taxes and privatization. Lebanon, protests that started in October 2019 have continued due to economic conditions and demands to end widespread corruption. Hong Kong, protests against an extradition bill reignited a pro-democracy movement, leading to significant political unrest. India, Farmers have been protesting against agricultural laws that they believe will deregulate the sector and harm their livelihoods. Chile, Sudan, Haiti, these countries have also witnessed significant protests due to various economic and political issues. Freshman Representative Andy Ogles, R, Tennessee, won a tough primary Thursday, lifted past a GOP challenger by the endorsement of former President Donald Trump. The Associated Press projected Ogles as the winner. With more than 90% of the vote counted, Ogles led with 56.5% to 43.5% for his opponent. President Trump, the GOP presidential nominee, who said Ogles has demonstrated he is truly dedicated to putting America first by introducing and supporting legislation that secure our southern border, stop inflation, uphold the rule of law, and defend the Second Amendment. Ogles, 53 years old, a former mayor of Maury County, Tennessee, entered Congress in January 2023. His first act was to oppose party leader Kevin McCarthy's effort to become House Speaker. Ogles recently introduced articles of impeachment against Vice President Kamala Harris. Ogles has maintained a hard stance against government spending. He doesn't vote for a lot of spending and we're going to need that discipline," said Rep. Tim Burchett, a fellow Tennessee Republican who is backing Ogles. Critics argue Ogles is more focused on gaining attention than serving constituents, while supporters appreciate his hard stance against government spending. That is all for today's top 5 news highlights. If you like our video, please subscribe, share and like. Thanks.